What do you see? I see very, very, very grey clouds. <laughs> yeah? I just hope that it doesn't rain on me. <laughs> Yeah. I'll read it. 
Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm going to go in there and have a row with them in a minute. gadgets in Russia when they go out of order yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. because it makes sense and uh, uh, well I'm in favor of your campaign I think it, it really makes sense yeah thank you and I really wish you to succeed in it because people should be more conscious about yeah. their consumption yeah yeah三十岁都属于一个转折点吧。会节奏相对比较快的话，实际上每一个人都会处在一个相对急躁的这种心态，那就促使每一个人都会害怕自己被社会淘汰。我譬如说事业和家庭都还算满意。一般吧，因为我负责的事情要多一些，所以说每天的话可能在十二个小时左右吧。周六的话也有其他的工作，所以说。休息时间会少一些。在一六年的时候，国家政策上产生了一些变化，游戏产业一些政策上的一些影响，包括审核制度，就造成了倒闭了很多很多家公司，大家就是不太容易找到工作了。所以对于普通人来说是完全无能为力的，对吧？我们不能解决这个问题。贸易战就会造成经济下滑，经济下滑的话，实际上我就容易有这样这方面的担心，就会造成我们的工作。包括生活受到一定的影响，我这个年纪人大部分都背着很重的贷款，抗风险能力特别差，就家庭的抗风险能力很差。一旦产生这种动荡的话，有可能就造成，咱说好听点叫破产，实际上就是没钱了，或者叫过不下去了。然后呢，我就梦到，知道自己是在自己的房子里面。很奇怪，就是知而知嘛，我来接我。当时我就喊我走，然后从自己的床上起来，跟着他走出自己的房门，就是很真实，真实到我当时就感觉这个事情已经发生了，就好像自己已经死了一样。我最近过得不太好。你是个编剧，我是，行业有很多不满意的地方。
，三十岁的期待，你现在达成了吗？没有。当时是什么期待？三十岁应该是挺大的岁数了，就可以成家立业，在北京有一席之地了。但是现在看来，这个目标还没有完全达到，因为。我发现，放在中产要建构一个完整的生活，代价其实挺大的。我反省一下，如何更进一步。At first, I was at a party. The party was lame, so I went home. It was late. I tried to sleep, but failed. I looked into the mirror and found my teeth. Was coming down, not a good sign. I felt sick. At the midnight, I found myself turning into a mechanic structure. First fingers, then the wrist, then the whole arm. Cogs and parts were everywhere. It was disgusting. I was so in fear. 你现在对你三十岁的自己满意吗？不满意，我没有坚持我该坚持的东西，但是我我也没有放弃，所以我还在努力当中。但是我觉得我三十岁还是跟我之前毕业的时候设想自己是不一样的。本身就是因为画画，因为喜欢画画嘛。发现毕业之后，因为为了生活，为了经济来源，我可能会抛弃一些我本应该坚持的东西。然后直到我现在生活算比较稳定的，我才回头发现。我可能把这东西丢了太长的时间，所以我想把它捡回来。大公司需要怀孕的人间接炒掉了，因为工作压力导致流产的人也有啊。背着房贷、车贷那种生活的女性，压力更大。在深圳，百分之七十多人都有房贷。我人啊，我我是真就有这种背着背着房贷，然后怀着孩子，这种工作被炒的情况，有的很绝望的。很有可能说你处在世界上升期，就因为你怀孕这一年，然后你就被别人给淘汰。就中型企业，它可能会会导致说，就因为你怀孕，所以开开掉你，没有没有原因。这个现状是中国大部分公司都有的。我有时候会梦到我上班有点像工厂里面流水线上一个工人，你没有感情的那种。见自己在加班，然后我的上司一直在盯着我，<笑>各种监视我，内心很害怕。还有地狱，嗯，那种红红的呃海火，很可怕的骷髅死神。现在的话呢，其实最大的愿望就是有一个相对稳定的生活，能跟孩子长期生活下去。等于还没有特别基本的一个生活的保障的话，远的可能不是那么的能想象了吧。嗯、um, ，and try to write some good stuff and try to make the industry better。我我我很想去新疆，新疆那个帕米尔高原。它海拔有有五千多米It, they usually happen when I feel like I'm in the flow of something, or I'm really busy, and then they kind of pull me out of my train train of thought, or make me have to deal with something that might not contribute to what I'm currently working. Something that gets in the way of normal life. It means you kind of need to divert your path and It's do something differently. It's a time that breaks up what you're doing.、Um, Whether you're like when you're just super busy on something, that interruption just breaks your mode of thinking for that moment. 
Um, they're sometimes quite irritating, but sometimes if you follow them, uh, they can be quite magical and you can find out, you can discover a new thing in an interruption. A moment in time where everything that you're doing stops and kind of time restarts again. An interruption is something that breaks the continuity of something else. I definitely tried to not overlap my lines. Like I tried to not, like I tried to have even spacing. I was actually also quite affected by like the sound. Yeah. And out of the corner of my eye, I was trying to like see whether we were like synced up. Yeah. And there were points. I think actually that was when I started getting like messier when I was trying, trying to like to... catch up with yeah. you or trying to slow down. Because well, I was, was trying to kind of synchronize. Yeah, I definitely think it was a break. And it was like nice to just be told what to do. I didn't have to think about it. And midway I realized it, it looks like a, a, a knot in the tree, like how you have this tree trunk. Mm. And I'm working with wood a lot recently and I was just cleaning a, a knot. I think it's somehow connected for me. I don't think it's negative. Yeah. Um, I think it was nice to just get my head somewhere else and have something to properly concentrate on that yeah. you knew you were going to get yeah, to that end point and you knew what it was going to look like. And it was a great opportunity for me to <clears throat> see the area which I've already known for a long time, how other people interact with the area, like how they walk. And I found some cafes that I didn't know they existed. So even though I live here, like around here, I don't usually walk that street. So um, I was just randomly walking because sometimes when you live in the area, you actually don't really know around the area. Yeah, it was nice to be in the park. Like I think yeah. this was quite a nice location. I think it would have been quite different if we had been on yeah. street.
I did like some of the prompts where it was about the wind or the weather mm. or like the feeling of the ground. Yeah. And that worked quite well, I think, in this setting. And also, we didn't have any obstructions that we had to wait, or other than things that we found interesting. Like, we could just continuously walk until you asked us to stop. I feel like I really did have the feeling, okay, I should focus on looking at, like, finding something that I hadn't looked at before, because I know this park really well. It's just nice of, like, walking into something familiar, still seeing new things. White 49, white line 49, yellow 2 and 9, yellow line 29, blue all the fours, blue line 44. All our futures and all the different pasts that we might have had are all in some sense happening at distant parts in space and in time. After the fair left and the Radio 1 Roadshow stopped, it ripped the heart out of the roll. And even it's reflected on some of the holiday makers here because they said they won't come to Rill anymore um, because of it. They say, Where, where's all the life gone out of Rill? Where's the shops on the promenade? Where's we, yes, so we've got arcades, closed, haven't we? It's closed, it's closed. That's yeah. what you see, yeah. arcades and... Yeah. Some people have put it down to politics, local politics, national politics. I don't think so. I think it's something different. I think it's something, I think it's something more, I wouldn't say sinister, but odd. We wouldn't normally expect gravity to change over such a small distance, unless there was something very unusual um, in real, beneath the surface. It depends on what sort of day it is, because sometimes it could be like down and that. Sometimes it can just be uplifting and spiritual. It used to be, uh, used to be dead, I thought, when I was like younger. But it's always busy now, especially in the heat. There, they've got discos and arcades and swimming pools and parks and golf and all sorts, haven't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't it that way. <laughs> We conceive of space uh, as a bit like a rubber sheet. Then when that rubber sheet is, is very, very bent, then the force of gravity will be um, very great. Oh, you yeah. can see the dark side yeah. of real, like the yeah. drugs and stuff like that. Um, possibly there is fluctuating in real a region of space that contains this negative pressure. And uh, it would have the effect of making people feel lighter. Some people are, it looks like they're treading on air, the way they're walking, they're bouncing, they're almost, they're almost like floating. My birthday will be go to my mate for lunch, then go to cinema, along the beach, then after I've been to the beach, go to the arcades, spend a couple of quid here and there, and then uh, get a drink from the shop, get Mackey's for tea, and have a nice little walk home. Strawberry milkshake, chips, quarter pounder and the little cheesy nibbles. <laughs> so on the Saturday and Sunday we'll have the air show here. So we get a lot of people kind of drifting out towards Sandidno or towards Halakra. And what I always feel like I'm flying. <laughs> there's, there's certainly better people than me though, certainly. I get a lot more height. Well, if they keep on doing it up like they are doing, I can see it to probably not get back to how it was in its heyday, but uh, people will probably start coming back. You know, they're, they're always putting new things up. Just apart from the tower there, they haven't done that up, which is a shame. The strength of science is in its vulnerability. Uh, one falsifying observation or experiment can destroy completely an entire scientific theory. Most people think the sea is controlled by the moon, but I think it's controlled by real round here. 
on a nice day it comes in. But as soon as the weather turns bad, it goes out again. It's like gravity. Uh, hello, members of Goldsmiths University. Adam Kirby, he's probably sat just there, uh, off, you know, on a chair. He uh, asked us, he gave me the, uh, the, uh, the search history of an anonymous person. Uh, and he told us to, you know, try and figure out what kind of person it is. I'm going to hazard a guess here and say that I have just spent a fair old while reading the YouTube search and watch history of comedian and musician Ben Westwood. And I have one message for you, Ben Westwood. Stop Googling yourself. Those views don't count. I think the person's a girl, right? And I'll tell you why. I think um, she... I'm pretty sure it's a girl, right? Because she's got a... Uh, she's been watching a lot of, you know, making your own hair bun uh videos like a couple of years ago on youtube do you know what i mean i mean fact, i live in brighton though so it could be a it could be a uh it could be a man you know it could be a man bund man i'm not gonna judge someone for watching asmr videos i do it all the time so i know they're relaxing and they give you that nice tingling sensation i just worry about the tingling sensation that someone gets from a tortoise making this noise <sighs> It's not even like you stumbled upon that through some random wormholing. You sat down and you typed in the phrase ASMR tortoise. I mean, what is it you were looking for? Maybe just a very slow wank? She also watched the Six Nations, um, you know, rugby, uh, the, the, world, the rugby thing, Six Nations when it was on. Uh, watched all the England highlights and that. And then about a week after the final, um, she watched a video called what are the rules of rugby? <laughs> and only a woman would be like that because I feel like a man would try and you'd be like, what's what's happening? And she's just happy to sit there like, what's going on? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? What's everyone got against that big egg? It really is just reams of shitty American stand-up though, isn't it? Punctuated by Nirvana, Leonard Cohen songs, and Why do I know this? Greta Thunberg. I shouldn't be up here. Your search history really does just read like that of a man who in his heart of hearts knows that he's just not very funny whilst simultaneously trying to feel something anything you know you seem like a nice girl do you know what i mean you've been watching a, you know you look after yourself and you, you've been watching a lot of like workout videos i will say one thing what's of all the asmr massage videos do you know because you've been watching them a lot haven't you You've been watching those videos a lot and if you don't know what asmr massage videos are it's like it's like if you go to a massage parlor and they're like would you like the full body or just like a head indian head massage and you're like no i think i'll just stand in the corner do you know what i mean have a little listen your life is so tragic that one day you opened up youtube and typed in the words tesco sandwich review i mean how low does your self-esteem have to be that you can't write a review of a fucking Tesco sandwich without getting instructions first? You are the bloke who asks his girlfriend to draw him a diagram before sex. Or you would if she herself wasn't a crudely drawn stick figure on a napkin. I think she's a graphic designer who either works in like a uh, home, like interior design, or like a... Uh... She works uh, for like an advertising, like maybe freelance, do you know what I mean? Otherwise, you know, why are you watching all these advert videos? Because YouTube comes with adverts as well, so you're watching adverts within adverts by choice. I feel like it's a, it's like a professional thing. Although I have to say, I am a bit disappointed by the lack of soft porn content. Uh, there's not a lot of creepy, not quite porn searches, which at first I thought was quite sweet and pure. But on reflection, if you're not using YouTube to search for something wholesome yet titillating to get the job done, you're probably just a deviant looking for something disgusting on other parts of the internet. Having said that though, fuck that bitch death grips. I, I have nothing to say about that. I, I think it I think it speaks for itself. 33 year old single uh, woman. Uh, looks after herself. Uh, really into ASMR massage, mate. Also, dude, 9-11 happened. So did Sandy Hook. You can stop checking now. Also, Louis CK is still a sex pest. You are still not chill. Maybe you need to get some more sleep. Uh, several hundred times this year, 
you watch YouTube videos between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. It's that sort of mix of conspiracy theories and insomnia that leads to mass shootings. So seriously, dude, are you okay? Hi, I'm Frank and I study in the UK, but I'm not British. My appearance is a little bit special. Um, okay, it's fairly special. My body has different skin tones and there are five colours distributed on my torso and limbs. On account of this, some people call me a freak. They usually mock me. Frank is a freak, Frank is a freak. I know, it's not a good nickname, but I got used to it and eventually ignored it. Let's talk about my appearance in detail. My lightest part is my right hand, which is fair and rosy. My torso is brown, my left hand is beige, and my right leg is olive colored in skin. The darkest part is my left leg, that is a suave ebony. Because of what I look like on the outside, I often suffer from discrimination, which includes verbal abuse and physical bullying. There are different discriminations that have happened to my body. Here are my stories. I start with my black left leg. I was sitting on the lower deck of the double-decker bus that day. There was only one space next to me on the lower floor. I know my legs are a little bit fat, so my left leg would probably touch someone else's leg if someone tried to sit next to me. At that time, the bus stopped at the station and a group of people got on the bus. One of the white men was about 30 years old and chose to stand on the lower floor. I didn't think much of it. I just thought he was a gentleman who wanted to give me a little bit more space. So he didn't sit on the seat next to me, but when the bus stopped at the next stop, there was a white girl on the other side with an empty space. He immediately sat in the now vacant seat. This was really strange. I don't think he was being malicious or had some disgust. However, I can't refrain from feeling that he subconsciously didn't want to get close to my black leg. Another time I came back from Sainsbury's after I bought my daily necessities. I carried a large bag with my beige left hand and walked on the footpath. An elder female deliberately got close and collided with my left hand. As a result, my bag dropped to the ground. Things were scattered all over the floor. The road was wide enough, so I was very shocked. Why did she have to get that close to me? When I heard her say, go back to your country. I instantly understood that this was racial discrimination. One evening, I took the overground at Canada Water to go back home. I clearly remembered that I got on the transportation and walked towards the front as usual. When I was walking, I noticed there was a man stood beside the corridor and we looked at each other just before I passed by him. He extended his leg suddenly. My olive colored right leg was tripped by his. I nearly fell down. I knew he did this on purpose. So I turned around and stared at him. Meanwhile, he smiled artificially and said, oh, I'm sorry. I felt really uncomfortable, but I'm too timid to strike back. And I was afraid to cause a fight. Another experience happened in Canary Wharf. I had a friend coming over from India and I had agreed to show him around. It was mid-August, so the weather conditions were not too harsh and we stayed out till late, around 11 p.m. We reached Canary Wharf and decided to grab a bite at the pier. While we were sitting, nothing happened for the first few minutes. But then there was a group of three teens that got close. They were all white mostly around 16 to 17 years old. 
and they came around on their bicycles and started circling the pier. A few minutes later, other boys on skateboards joined them. They asked us if we wanted some weed. We politely declined. We thought it was a bit odd. We didn't think much of it. Later, a few minutes passed. Three of them zipped past us and one of them chucked a bottle of soft drink at us. This bottle struck my brown neck and that was followed by the word, faggot. This was just because we both have brown skin and happen to be sitting next to each other at night. The weirdest thing is that my body suffers for indifferent discriminations and bullying, except for my right hand. This hand always seems to get the special treatment. Everyone treats it so kindly and even with respect when I interact with them. I really don't understand the situation. They're all part of my body. Does colour really matter? Oh, by the way, my birthday will be coming up soon and I want to make a wish. The wish I want to make would seem to be absurd and impractical. But I hope that one day the world could be pitch black so everyone would look the same. Now begins the eighth audio exercise. On spot running. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, stop. Stretching exercise. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Expanding exercise. So this is the model of health fluctuations, and the constant line is the standard expectation. Now, the status of entire health goes down because the middle one is playing shooting and then she's back to the standard movements. This time, she gets some reaction so the entire health falls deeper and then back to normal. Four, 
Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to introduce you to my morning skincare routine. Now, let's get started. The first thing I do in the morning is slap my face. I highly recommend you guys to clean your face with some strong and hard slaps. It is a very good way to start your beautiful day. You can add some water if you want. I usually stop when I get my face red. And after doing my cheeks, I'll also do my forehead and neck. It is very important to slap. Get myself a cup of coffee and prepare for the next step. So in the morning, if my mouth looks dull, I'll use my teeth to bite my lips really hard until some blood color flows up to them. Our teeth are very strong, so don't waste them. Also, do not forget the edges of your lips. They are extremely important. Devil always hides in the details. What I will do next is to use my thumb and forefinger to pinch and stretch my skin. You want to hold tight to your skin and then keep lifting it up. Try to use as much strength as you can. This method is very effective to help you lift up your skin and make you look more energetic in the morning. If I'm not satisfied with the effect from pinching, I'll then grab my hair and pull them up really hard. This is very effective for against skin aging. I especially love to do this on the balcony. Fresh air and the pulling wake me up. No worries if you don't have long hair like me. You can try to pull up your ears. It also works quite well. And at last, don't forget the bands. And the last routine is a way to refresh your skin. It helps to absorb what we gain from the previous steps. So, I rub my face round and round until it gets red. Then it means your skin has fully ready for a brand new day. That is all I will do to start my morning. Hope you guys can like it and really use this method. Have a nice day and see you in my next video. We could ride the surf together.
来到伦敦一年多，其实说真的，最难过的时刻，可能就是跟才在一起半年的男朋友分手吧。从一个亚洲的国家来到一个开放的西方国家，很多事情一开始都非常的新鲜，但是随之而来的就是巨大的孤单感。时差一个人之后，就会觉得感情的寄托变得非常的重要。而在那个时候，我遇到了，嗯。你的第一个外国男朋友，我们相处的时刻一开始都非常的开心，直到出现了一些价值观上的不同，以及所有所有很多不同的读书啊、工作，或者是对于情感方向的理解，那两个人想要一起走的方向开始出现分歧之后，整段感情变得非常非常的拖拉，而且非常非常的痛苦的一个过程。那甚至到最后分手了，我都还会不断的一直责备自己，说为什么我当初不能够再低声下气一点，也许我就可以好好的再跟他在一起。但殊不知，就是这段过程，我其实一直都骗着自己，可能他是很开心的。那我也不会想要特别跟人家分享，因为我其实有点害怕去说出来。
我那样子低声下气，有违于自自己的自尊的一段感情。Hey, do you want to date me? Sometimes I modify my photos more and more. I want to make them more attractive. Do more people like me now? Welcome to join me on this morning today.
Throughout the show, we will discuss one specific topic, reproductive coercion. Reproductive coercion is actually a form of power and control when one sexual partner controls another's reproductive system and timeline. It is defined as the behavior by a male sexual partner to cause an unwanted pregnancy. This behavior could contain actions like preventing a woman from using her contraception or sabotage her use of her contraception. Additionally, a sexual partner could also that psychological manipulation. This is not a new phenomenon, but it has recently been recognized as a distinct type of domestic abuse in 2010. There is a real lawsuit case happening in Canada. A man jailed for poking holes in condoms to get his girlfriend pregnant. This man has lost his appeal and served his sexual assault sentence of 18 months. From the Supreme Court of Canada this hour, it's been weighing the case of a Nova Scotia man convicted of sexual assault. It happened after he sabotaged the condoms he used with his girlfriend, resulting in her pregnancy. So he poked holes in the condoms that they were using in order to try to get her pregnant, hoping that that would save the relationship. It worked. She did get pregnant. Uh, and when he later confessed to what he had done, she got angry. She called the police. He was charged with sexual assault. He was initially acquitted. Uh, it went to the appeal court, ordered a new trial, uh, which he was then convicted of sexual assault. Sex. The Crown argued that, yes, uh, the conviction should stand because she only consented to protected sex, not unprotected sex. The Supreme Court uh, handed out ruling moments ago, 7-0, to zero, to uphold his conviction of sexual assault. Today, we invite two guests to join us to discuss this topic. The first guest is jewelry designer Victor Law. Just launched a new collection of jewelry to raise people's awareness of this phenomenon. The second guest is Dr. Lee. She will be introducing us about some highly effective breast control methods and tell us which one is in low risk to be sabotaged. To join us, he brought us his latest jewelry collection, If You Love Me, to highlight the concept of reproductive coercion. This collection is the contemporary interpretation of the classic Victorian locket for meeting the modern women's needs. Hi, Nicole. Hello, everyone. Hi, Victor. Can you tell me how you get the idea to redesign the locket for your latest collection? Sure, Nicole. In, because in history, the locket always been treated as the most sentimental and most uh, romantic jewelry. People treasure it and hold it close to their heart. It has long been worn by the women to express their love to their family members or their lovers. A locket, by definition, is a small case with a secret space and made of some treasure metal. So in this case, I made it with gold. And then when you open the disc of the locket, you can see the portrait of this woman's loved one or the a bunch of hair from their loved one, or sometimes even the poison. So in my latest collection, I transformed this symbolic romantic jewelry to be a weapon. Just like the Victorian locket, all of these pieces have the sacred space. You can hide in some reproductive products, such as the condom, this big one can help you to hide the condom and also the contraceptive pills like this is really small one you can hide the oral contraceptive pills or the emergency contraceptive pills inside of this locket then it can help you for avoiding the uh, methods was tempered by your abusive partner That sounds a brilliant idea I have to say Thank you. And can you tell us why you choose to design a collection that relates to reproductive coercion issue? Sure, actually this idea initially comes from what happened on my friend. That's called me and mentioned she might get divorced. So I'm a little bit shocked because she seems to um, get along well with her husband. And I asked her why and she explained because her husband threatened if she still insists to not to have kids and he will divorce with her. So basically, he want, he want to force her to get pregnant, no matter if she wants to. So right now, my friend start to worry about if the condom was being poked or the tempered by her husband. Okay. That made her get pregnant, seems like accidentally, just like some soap TV shows in China. So this story made me re thinking about how can I design a safe space for this woman to hide their reproductive products. 
So I realized maybe the Victoria Lockets can mm -hmm. be the good choice because they have the secret space and you always wear it. You can keep this product safe. So that's why I am start to doing this collection. I see, that's mm -hmm. very sweet. And uh, can you tell us something about the name of this collection, if you love me? Yes. Um, when I decide to design this collection, I started to collect some stories on the website or from the people who surrounded me. I heard their stories and I noticed that there's one sentence they keep mentioned rapidly, which is, if you love me. Mm -hmm. This woman mentioned their sexual partner always make this as an excuse, like, if you love me, you should allow me not wearing condom because which make me feel better. Yes. Or if you love me, you have to give a kid for me because it sounds better. So I'm thinking, um, I actually can use this as a name to represent in two sad stories. So just like this locket, I engraved the name on the back of the locket. On the one side, it's like the, it shows the shameless excuse from the male side how they forced their partner to get the pregnant. And on the other side, it's also like the feedback from the female who suffered this reproductive coercion. Yes. Like if you love me, you shouldn't you should respect my decision. And if you love me, you shouldn't do this shit on me. So that's why I choose this name as my collection's name. So when women is wearing this locket, it's not only for them to hide the products, but also for them to shout out their inner voices. Exactly. That's why I named this collection as if you love me. It's like the statement jewelry yes. for them too. Yeah. yeah, fascinating to talk with you today. Thank you for inviting me today. Thank, Thank you. you. Here I'm introducing Dr. Lee. She brought us some highly effective birth control methods, from the IUD to condoms, the pill, the patch, and more. She will also give us some suggestions about which method is in low risk to be sabotaged by a sexual partner. Dr. Lee. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Lee. I'm so glad to be here today. And as you say, there are some stuff displayed on the table. They are all the contemporary contraceptive products we use today. And I will give you some information about each of the products and also to recommend which one with the low risk to be tempered by your abused partner. First, this is the what it called the IUD. As you say, the IUD is a little piece that you can get put in your uterus to mess with the sperm can move and also prevent them from fertilizing an egg. IUDs often offers years of protection between 3 and 12 depending on the types you chose and if you want you can have it removal at any time. On the implant, the implant is a tiny tiny rod that is inserted on the, the skin of your upper arm. It's so small and in fact, most people can't see it once it is inserted, which means it can be your little secret. The implant releases progesterone and prevents pregnancy up to four years. This is the shot. The shot is just what it sounds like, a shot that keeps you from getting pregnant. Once you get it, your birth control is covered by three full months. There's nothing else you need to kill. This one probably the most familiar one for most of you. Mm -hmm. It's also called the oral contraception. You take it once a day at the same time. Most work by the releasing hormones that keeps your ovaries from releasing eggs. And this one is the emergency contraceptions. Emergency contraception pill is also be called morning after pill. It can stop a pregnancy before it starts. And there are four types of this kind of um, emergency contraception you can choose from and they will work up to 5 days or 120 hours after the unprotected sex mm -hmm. but use it sooner than later is better to reduce the possibility of getting pregnant this one is called the cervical cape a cervical cape is a silicone that you can insert into your vagina to cover your cervical cervix and keep sperm out of your uterus mm -hmm. The one super important thing to remember when you use this cape, you need to use this sperm side at the same time, otherwise it won't be work. The last product I want to introduce is the personal contraception monitor. The method is all about monitor your menstrual circle, then you can decide 
determine the way you want to get pregnant. But the tricky part of this product is you have to remember your menstrual date. So which means you have to keep the close attention to your body and especially your menstrual circles and the patterns. So just like Echo mentioned, there are some methods that are actually less vulnerable to be tempered by your sexual partner. But the thing I want to highlight is actually it still can be detectable due to the abnormal bleeding or the stop of your period. There are IUDs, the shot, and the implant. If your partner monitors your menstrual circle, IUD may be the safest way to offer because if the doctor cut the string from the IUD, which means they can't be pulled out or filled by your partner. Also, the inconvenience of IUD removal with the ultrasound may well be also worth avoiding an unwanted pregnancy by abusive partner. Mm -hmm. Except this three, the emergency contraception can be also an effective method. It can be t because it can be taken from the original package and then you can hide it in the safest place, just like Victor's locket. Yeah. So your partner won't be find it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Echo. And that's all for today's show. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Nagging pain at the back of my ear was excruciating. Pulsation was knocking on the inside of my skull, rendering me fragile. I walked into the beige-tiled bathroom of my cramped two-bedroom rental flat. The dim light of the energy-saving bulb began to get brighter with every passing second, while I stare at myself in the mirror. I see the withered face of a middle-aged human. I'm tired and sore. My fish-scale-colored hair is dull. My eyes are generously decorated with wrinkles. My cheekbones are sunken. My skin is bruised blue tint. The pulsation of the lymph node area gets stronger the longer I look. My attempt to touch it induces a violent urge to retch. I spit bloody bile down the sink. I must have unknowingly chewed on my swollen cheek, or tongue, or lip. As the pain encapsulates me I cannot differentiate which one is the source. I run a small towel under cold water to use as a compress, bring down the swelling. I walk over to my bed, breathing in the stagnant air of the cramped apartment. It is dark, I do not bother to turn on the lights. On my bedside table there is a pack of painkillers and a day-old glass of dusty water. I drink underscore number of pills before managing to pass out, sleeping under the cold wet towel. The feverish misery of the pain-induced sleep cloaks me away from the darkness of my home. I dream of something vacant and white. While I am dozing in and out of consciousness, the pulsating pain seems to be happening to someone else. My body felt light, warm. My head was void of thoughts and troubles. You have one missed call. I abruptly rose up in bed. With the lingering feeling of annoyance towards the person who had so rudely awoken me, I rummaged through my belongings to find the mobile phone. The screen lights up, no new notifications. I reluctantly get up to go to my kitchen, habitat of landline. The white plastic rectangular terminal was tranquil, periodically flashing its green light. No missed calls. Still haunted with fatigue, I get back into bed. Falling asleep I shed my worry, I must have dreamt the call. I dream of tall white buildings and the scent of my late loved one. I dream of rattling clock mechanisms and the smell of rotten flowers. I fall into the black gulf. Hello. Hello. I hear a voice and reach out to answer, hoping it will anchor me out from my nightmare. Hello. Underscore speaking. The voice on the other side of the terminal seems hysterical. I hear an abysmal howl. It felt very close, too close, right above my ear. No, closer, maybe inside my head. I jerk my hand from the side of my face, instinctively searching for phone screen in palm, to see who I was talking to. My hand is empty. I finally awoke. The pain at the side of my face began to pulsate again. The unsettling feeling of how real the scream had felt begins to worry me. I try to logically explain to myself, blaming it on the continuation of just a bad dream filled with clocks and rotten gulf.
I sit up in bed, still trying to process the unnerving experience. I decide to have supper in order to calm myself. I timidly walk back to the kitchen and open my waist-high rattling refrigerator. The emptiness of the shelves, backlit with yellow light, does not offer me any options. While filling up the kettle with cold water, I scan with my bloodshot eyes the kitchen shelves. To my happiness, I locate an old pack of instant pot noodle. Dinner is sorted. As I dig through the drawers in the hope of finding a clean fork, I ponder whether to listen to some radio. With metal fork in hand, I fill up the noodle pot with boiling water, and wait for them to brew. I shriek momentarily. I look around to locate where that way too familiar buzzing is coming from. My phone, it's still in the bedroom. I go there to try and see what's going on. As I try to convince myself that the sound was most definitely coming from my phone, my hands are shakily sifting through the heap of bed sheets and pillows. Turning. Turn over. Convince myself. I found it. The screen comes on. Nothing, but the battery is low. I take the phone to the kitchen blaming the buzzing noise on the low battery. I plug it into the socket to charge. I poke the noodles with the fork, still not ready. I sit down on creaky old stools staring at my face in fatty reflection of fork. Hello, can you hear me? I feel the voice right above my ear. No, just like in the dream, inside my ear. I jump off the stool and look around. I am alone. I look out of the window, emptiness and exterior calmly shaken by the wind treetops reassures that I am still alone. It is silent again. I walk out into the dark corridor connecting kitchen and front door. Maybe it's the neighbors. Hesitant, I look through the keyhole. The well-lit patio on the other side of the door is empty. I begin to panic. The unknown source, the sound terrifies me. Hello. Sudden realization. Yes, the voice is coming from within my head, renders me motionless. Standing in state of stupor I become aware that it's coming from the paint, swollen side of my face. I get myself back into the bathroom. The pain is unbearable as I open my mouth as wide as possible. I cannot see anything. The brief inspection of my ear gives the same result, nothing. I finger through the inside of my mouth with both my hands. No, nothing. But the voice is still there. Repetitive buzzing, its attempt to agitate me. I begin to wiggle and automatically start to pull out the loose teeth that run along the swollen side of my face. Blood gushes from my mouth. The clunking of ceramic on ceramic rolling down the sink strain somewhat calms me and insufferable pain overcomes the noises coming from my head. I fall on the floor. He Thank you 我想的是与其让各方媒体在我的故事上添油加醋不如我直接先发制人你真的没有想过利用此事来博得一些关注吗
，我本来心里就是有愧的。那你建议向我们的新观众朋友们梳理一次整个事件的发展过程吗？没问二零一九年十月。第十八刊的《Like》杂志社爆出新闻：一星在出道前疑似使用非法手段篡改身体数据，并且屡次通过非法医学手段掩盖罪行，对社会造成恶劣影响。二零一九年十一月，一星针对此事接受警方调查，终止一切演艺活动，并发布了官方道歉视频。向大家道歉，对不起。那这家杂志社，想必你应该是通过什么的？嗯，你对他们的报道是怎么看的呢？我当初选择进这个行业的时候，其实我是有心理准备的，但是我和这家媒体之间的矛盾真的太深了。他们大概是第一家，也是最穷追不舍的了，甚至还有记者去翻我们家附近的垃圾桶。我们选了几篇报道，你能谈谈这当中最令你印象深刻的是哪一幅吗？所有的非议我都是可以容忍的，可是唯独他们家一口咬定我说我不洗澡是我脏，我接受不了。这话怎么说呢？我从小就有很严重的洁癖症，我对脏啊、臭啊之类的概念，我真的敏感到 PTSD 的程度，哪怕是有厕所、有排水管的照片，我都不能看第二眼。看了这两幅，我这么爱干净的人被他们说脏，我肯定是接受不了的。而且我控告他们家诽谤了很多次，这篇关于手术事件的报道难道也是诽谤吗？你可以叫他非法手术，但是绝对不会到恐怖事件的程度。我又没有买卖器官做人体实验，我只是切除了汗腺，我就是为了不出汗而已。天哪，切除！我听着都觉得好痛。那你当时才多大？我做手术的时候是十八岁，开始做手术毒杆菌的时间是十五岁。怎么还会有肉毒杆菌？因为十六岁的时候不是要把 ID 卡进入体位吗？所以要在那个之前要开始止汗了。难道你爸妈都不知道这是非法的吗？对他们知道，但是是我自己要做的。我当时说了，我非做不可。那是什么让你在那个年纪就这么敢下狠心？因为那个时候正值青春期，出汗有很多，办卡的时间呢又是夏天。尽快处理的话，就很容易会暴露。以前有暴露过吗？小学和初中的时候有过。第一次被发现的时候呢，是小学二年级左右。我的同学们在体育课后排着队来闻我的胳肢窝。后来到了初中，又是夏天，我刚好进了我们一个老师的办公室，我就进去，他把窗子打开，然后就这样子扇。那后来就再也没有过了吗？对，因为我想到了用花这个法子。可以具体说一下吗？也是因为我身体的缘故，我对香味的要求比一般人都要高。对于正常人来说，花只要香就可以了。但是你要拿它来掩盖自己的体味，就必须要芳香。我也是仿照古人的做法，但是这点不好明说。我们在薪酬上是出现了问题的，但是这一点我必须要向全国的观众朋友们解释一下。虽然我们的矛盾是有的，但是真的没有任何网上所说的暴力事件。所以你放弃了自然的香味，而改用了人工手段。对，以前是因为太小，人工的香味又太不自然，所以很容易被发现。那你可以告诉我，你当时选择迈出那一步的时候，你内心想法是什么呢？只是对他们卖给我的话不满，也没有达到我预期的效果，所以我没有付他们钱。然后花店就觉得我这样都很不公平，所以跟我产生了争执。我买花跟童年是有很大的关系。因为那些花并不只是拿来装饰用的，而是以编织的形式送到我家来，每天都要送上好几批。我平时的工作确实是需要用到鲜花，比如说拍摄园艺和家居类的题材的时候，我是需要用到的。但是这种类型的工作是不需要用到有香味的花，只要好看就可以。所以我另需要买一批应季的香花，香味呢要持续一整天，比如说栀子花、茉莉花这种。有点像我们南方人小时候买到的茉莉手串，是的，我们的合同上要求对这些事情是保密的，所以我没有想到花店居然会把我们争吵的内容直接公开在网上。我觉得我拿到的东西不满意，我们可以协商这个问题，对方却要对我的名誉造成负面影响，而且要采用一些很激进的方式。我们私下也说过这些问题，任何小的事故在聚光灯下就会被放大数十倍。到无关的网友们，还有其他的凑热闹的人，也过来你一言我一语，那么事情就变味了
。那你后来有没有跟他们坦白过呢？没有，我一直都要求他们家把袋子、用袋子把东西装好，由我本人亲自来接受。而且呢，包装上一定要写上“仁义”的字样。这么严厉的方式，最后还是行不通。太难了。有的时候我非常苦恼，为什么只有我这么倒霉，都有这种病？当时最让我担心的不仅仅是违法的问题，我的手臂功能可能会因为手术受损，留疤复发都是有可能的。但是我内心很坚定，哪怕手断了，我都要做这个手术。这么多疾病里头，我真的宁愿当个残疾人，我都不要有这个味道。眼瞎耳聋，你又不会碍着别人，可你这个味道有了，怎么藏都藏不住。政策就需要我记录这些特征，我没有别的办法。为了更好的解释政策，我们节目组特地为十六岁以下的小朋友们准备了一套官方数据采集参照表。那你承认你是否有些欠考虑呢？对，我我承认的，我现在很后悔。比如说，我本来就不符合行业行规，我天生有达到二点五，大部分的人呢只有一，我这样走捷径已经对其他人来说很不公平了。虽然被辱骂、被非议，确实会让我很难承受，但是这是我需要面对的结果。我也没有其他的参考途径，得这个病的人呢又不多，我的数据是零。愿意和我玩的呢，也都是零和一这个区间的人，他们也没有任何人愿意去搭理那些二点五的。以前我们班上有一个达到三的女生，我和她偶尔说一次话，马上就有同学跑过来问我：“天哪，你怎么跟她说话呀？”我马上就反应过来，这事儿不能再做。是的，我无法面对她，因为我自己也不是真的是低于二点五的。但是，一旦想到我也会被像别人对她那么样子的对待，我。真的是没有办法睡觉，所以被说脏，我真的很在意这一点。和花店停止服务之后呢，我就开始打肉毒杆菌，打了三三年吧，半年打一次，我不打毒了，太痛了，我觉得实在是太难受了，我还不如一次性解决掉这个问题。谢谢你能够来参加我们的节目，我们也希望大家通过你的一些故事能够得到警醒。我希望这个社会能够对我们这样的少数群体更包容一些，更宽容一些。我这辈子最大的心愿，其实就是不给大家添麻烦。我希望未来有更多健康的方法，不改造身体的方法，也能治我们这种病。这个病给我们的家庭带来了很多负担。我们不可以告诉任何人，我们不可以告诉我们的朋友，我们不可以告诉任何亲密的人。婚姻、人际关系都会因为这件事情受影响。我到现在为止，我的所有亲密好友，我都没有办法向他们坦白。这么看来，你的立场确实很复杂。我想每一位家长都是这样的心情。我一直都在思考，接下来的人生应该如何进行下去。通过和你的这次谈话，我们从另一个角度了解了你的故事。希望接下来的生活能够回归平静，顺顺利利。谢谢大家。What's the weather like today? What materials of this room? What sort of the magazine sold in the store? Where the Starbucks from? Why the floor looks really slippery? Why the people standing behind me looks really nervous? What are they talking about? Where the cost store? What kind of the glasses? Of here, how can I get to the upper floor? How heavy can the glass structure here hold? It is outside this glass. Why do they use yellow, gray, and the black on the chairs? What material is this column? What is this bit of glass structure for? Where is Starbucks originally from? 
What is the word jubilee means? Where is the brand Bimbalola from? Why do they use marble on the floor? The emergency exit points downwards. So where is this downward? There's a CCTV camera. Is it 360 angles? Is this a smoke detector? Where is the Starbucks logo? People always lost their direction in this part, I think. But why I didn't see the sign of this? What is the function of this area? Does Starbucks sell any Christmas items now? Where is the lift from? What's the material of the siding? What color of these lights? Who designed this structure? What's the material of the floor? What is the upstairs? Is this a restaurant?